strap. Even the strap has made it amazing. It's given me an incredible strap. It's like sprung loaded so that it doesn't go huh when, when you do the huh thing. And it, it's in the perfect, it's like he knew. He knew. It's like he'd taken measurements from watching videos of the length of my body so that when he handed me the strap, not only was it Gibson branded for the first time ever on a Les Paul and Lanzas yeah. video, but it was it's the exact some length flavor, hasn't it? required to hang this LP around my pee. So why are we here today, Chappers? We're here to discuss all things Wanderous and Gibson. Well, this is probably the most <coughs> requested video of the last three months, ever since Gibson announced that there was going to be a whole bunch of radical changes to the Gibson lineup in 2015. Yes, we should say, however, before we do that, that this is Captain Lee. That's me. The captain of Andertons.co.uk. good ship Andertons. In Guildford. And I am Rob Chapman. He's the Chapman of Chapmanshire. In tribute, if you like, to what an innovator Les Paul was, yeah. uh, Gibson had decided to kind of go a little bit innovation crazy uh, in 2015 with uh, quite a few um, changes to the, to the Gibson USA lineup, some of which people are loving, some of which people aren't. Um, just going to show the sort of diversity, if you like, of the guitar playing market. Um, well, I've got a question for you, Lee. Mm. How many other signature guitars have hmm. become a standard in, in the guitar industry? None. None. I can't think of any. No, I mean, it, it's fundamentally, this is the only, uh, other than the Cap 10, obviously, which is now <laughs> completely, no, I jest. Um, I, think, I think maybe the gem has become a guitar that the metal and sort of fusion rock community the, could, could play in. Even the gem is fundamentally just a hot rodded RG, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's not like this is, there wasn't, this was it, wasn't it? You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Before. But it had a lot of switches on it. Before this, there was just, there just wasn't a Les Paul. No. So just we're going to do a series of videos uh, where we talk through all the different models in the 2015 range so at the moment you can see Rob has the standard and I have the traditional so actually this this year round we did a little different last year round we started at the bottom and worked up <coughs> this year we're going to start with the, the top two guitars and kind of yeah. work down to the the special and the and the junior well not down sideways sideways uh, we're going to go you know down in terms of price anyway um, but this video is going to be the longest one because this is where we kind of talk most about some of the features that are introduced in 2015 that are going to be on all the, 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 the USA guitars. So um, the, the, the other videos we're doing are a bit shorter and we'll just refer back to this video mm. quite a lot, I suspect. Um, so, I mean, well, there's so many things to sort of start with. So there are because there's been, there have been so many changes this year. Yeah. And it's caused a lot of banter on the internet, which is great. Yes, because that's what we all want. We just want to talk about stuff. And I, and I yeah. kind of think, you know, the beauty of guitars, and hopefully this is a universally accepted, you know, mindset, is there is no right and wrong in guitars. There is only what you like and what you dislike. Yes. And as Chappers <coughs> and I are a, a great example of. Um, well, if you, you know, look at our, if you look at the guitars that we made recently, yeah, I took a telly and I scalloped it and put bare knuckles yeah. in it and did stuff. And you took a guitar and did all sorts of stuff to yeah, it. Yeah, made it more Eric Clapton. -y. But I think most of the things. guitars that that we own are fundamentally quite different. And that's not to say Rob's right and I'm wrong or vice versa. It's just it's cool. <laughs> with some of the sort of overall 2015 kind of things. The, the range has actually been uh, slightly reduced. Uh, so there aren't so many models in, in the range and there aren't so many different finish options and stuff. So it's, so it's actually a slightly um, simpler range to sort of understand. Um, 
there's been a just a general quality increase. That's right from things like some of those satin finished guitars that you saw in, in 2014 and in previous years aren't being made anymore. So every guitar in the range has a nitrocellulose, you know, beautiful gloss finish. Um, there has been a, a change. Uh, there are no gig bags anymore in the range. Everything comes with a hard case. Oh, that's good. Um, the hard case has been switched over to the... Um, it's like a gun case, doesn't it? I don't know if it's SKB or make <coughs> them, but it's that, you know, like the Fender molded yeah. kind of case. It looks like you could throw it out of the window at Anderson's Warehouse. We and definitely aren't doing that. But yeah, in a nice kind of golden brown kind of color. Um, texture like sun. Texture like sun. Um, <laughs> The uh, Plec machine, uh, if you guys aren't sure what a Plec machine is, it's an unbelievably expensive machine uh, that's designed to sort of robotically or, or laser guidedly uh, check, you know, frets and setups and all this kind of stuff. Uh, I, I, this is a true story. I, I looked to buy one for Anderton's uh, about two or three years ago because I was thinking it would be nice to offer a Plec service. And uh, the Plec machine that you just put one guitar, in a ti one guitar yeah. at a time in, and bear in mind the ones that Gibson have are, are machines that take uh, more than one guitar at a time. Uh, the the one I wanted, even second hand, was sixty thousand pounds. Yeah, so I didn't buy it. Funny enough, that's, that's like in dollars. That's like a hundred thousand dollars. So Gibson have got loads of these things, and every single guitar from the Les Paul Junior, which is the base model, right through to the, the stand and stuff, goes through a, 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 an extended Plex setup. They're paying much more attention this year to. Um, how smooth the fretboards are, um, and silky smooth, by the way. Yeah, and and just and actually, one of the things that you'll you'll start to see now, you're, we're all quite used to Gibson, and not just Gibson. You know, people like PRS and stuff like that rating the the flame tops. So we talk about things like double A and triple A and blah blah yeah. blah. Gibson are now actually starting to rate um, the the grain of of the woods again in in the uh, used on the on the backs really? of the bodies and, and for the necks. So again, your your Les Paul standard, you know, once you're up to the kind of the premium stuff in the range, every timber selected for this guitar is kind of its top top grade okay. timber. <laughs> the sort of if you like that's your sort of general roundup if you like of the range Should we start with this yeah let's which i think it. is really cool yes. it's got a zero nut now that's true. and first... that's on every that's on every guitar again in in the yeah. uh, from the, the junior <clears throat> right through to the standard uh zero fret sorry so if you don't know what a zero fret is it's a nut but it's kind of like a fret the difference here is that it's it's re you can raise or lower it now this means that sort of for the first time in gibson's history at least you can choose how high your nut is. Altering the action of the nut, as most of you will know, makes a massive difference to the feel of a guitar, and it gives your tech, or you if you're a bit savvy, yeah. a lot of options in the way the guitar can feel. And but not also, just not just lowering it, which of course most of you would go, well, you know, if I can lower it a little bit, I'll get some nice chord. Uh, and but raise it. So if you want to play slide, you know, instead of doing the sort of yeah. thing where you see people chucking, you know, Rizzler cardboard and yeah. things like that. It'll go up, you know, a good couple of mil, and then it makes it kind of like a great slide guitar with yeah. with just literally um, little Allen key adjustment. So more options, which is a really good thing. Now, what I don't know that you probably might know, or our friend from Gibson will know, is what this is made from. It's brass, I think, isn't it? Nick, is it brass? Brass. So the man from Del Monte, he says <laughs> he said brass. Yes. Oh, he said brass. He, he said, said brass. brass. He said lead. Uh, <laughs> He said, "Yes, it's made of. Uh, it's made of uh, tin. It's made of cotton wool. Um, yeah. so no, brass, which brass. is great. Yeah, we all like kind of. You know, typically, I think brass. You know, we all accept to would add a little bit of zing. Quite a few pro players sort of. I think it adds high nuts. end on the open strings. Uh -huh. That's what I felt, and I, I had a brass nut on a guitar for absolutely years, and yeah. I call Betsy that many of you will know about. So we love the the nut, and the other thing that gives the feel down at the 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 the, um, the chord sort of end, I think, a really nice feel, is they've." lowered the height of the frets as well. So they are still the same sort of thickness, if you like, of a, as a, of a standard sort of Les Paul uh, fret, uh, but the height is, I think it's something crazy, like 27%. So if we say roughly a third um, lower than before. And Can it just, I say that it, I just don't feel any difference at all? Uh, do you know what, because I'm the opposite. The, the, when I very first picked this up, I, it kind of had that 
um, slightly played in kind of feel. But that's a, a good really way. good thing because I uh, traditionally mm. I and I think many kind of rocky metally guys go for the jumbo big yeah. frets, but these still feel kind of like normal big frets to me. Yeah, they well, don't I, feel. You yeah, know. I'm, I'm. I like that. Um, whilst we're at the top end, of course, uh, the tuning system has been upgraded for 2015 now to what's called GeForce. In a nutshell, it's still the same kind of concept as before, um, but <coughs> slightly more precision mounted now and with the uh, upgraded software as well, so the tuning is a little faster. And the other nice thing that you'll notice is uh, with the zero fret, uh, you don't get that on, on the older models where it had a traditional nut you could hear the the the, the uh, tuning system kind of going like tick, 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 you know oh, it, was it, it was kind of sticking which is i mean that's a yeah it's just not going to stick so it with can't stick in here well so let's it, just see if i need tuning because at the moment all right. i'm uh... maybe it's a little, little bit more than yeah make see it, if i can put it out, out of tune yeah it's a good idea damn it <laughs> I can't get this Les Paul out of tune. Let me, let me see if I can make What's going wrong? You're out of tune now, aren't Am you? Am I? I think you sound I don't. out of tune. Okay, I'll tune it then. What you noticed also on mine is the reason <coughs> you didn't hear my guitar making a noise, of course, is you. These, this is tuning from uh, like a headstock tuner would, like from a vibration. So you don't need to have your amp on or the volumes up on your guitar or anything. So you, so I've just tuned whilst Rob was tuning as well. Um, gosh, turn all my pedals off, um, but but without making without making a noise. I got I got to talk about this because I think it's just important to talk about this. Really, when I first saw this system, GeForce. Mm, mm. I was a little bit resistant because I'm a traditionalist and for me it was something that just wasn't really required unless you were a beginner. And then we did a couple of days of really hardcore filming here. Yeah. And I was tired. This was earlier this week. The guitars weren't staying in tune. Uh, I was getting annoyed. <clears throat> Actually very annoyed. Because the temperature differences in the room, they're all brand new guitars, they could yeah. be stretched, they could be tuned, then it goes out and goes out. And I went in the, um, the tech area to try out one of the new 2015 uh, what was it now? It was a, a Les Paul Junior, I think it was. Maybe. Yes, anyway, so. I, I couldn't really hear because there was a lot of noise going on, and I just instinctively picked it up, pressed the button, and tuned it. It went Zoop! in tune, literally within about eight seconds. And I went, you know what? That's really, really useful. One myth to expel, if you like, um, you can still move tuners. So if you just, if you do, just. Let you you go, do you know what, it's it's just one tiny string and it's just a smidgen out, I just want to literally go, you can do that. Um, and also, uh, I'll, I'll put a link, all this stuff is on the Anderson's website, but there, are, um, there's been some extended kind of uh, programmability on the GeForce, so this is the 2015 model. Um, so what you can do is, this, there's like a standard mode in here that the, the quickest thing to tune is to press one button and then it tunes to your sort of E standard well, tune. Yeah. And of course, people were worried that, you know, if you're a, if you play in like a drop C or something like that and you sort of panic, if you like, there, there's, there are now extra banks in here and ways so that your sort of default tuning mode, if you like, doesn't have to be um, standard E. So, so could you, you could swap between several tunings, can't you? Yeah, but you, what I mean is that, it, you know if you want to swap between a tuning, you, you press a button, then you press another one, yeah, then yeah. you go to it, and then you press <clears> a button, then it does it. What you can do is you can set your default one, to. so if you want your default setting to be drop C, and actually you're going to have, you know, really, really heavy gauge strings on it, whatever, that can be the one where you just press one button and it goes to that tuning. So um, That is great. Which is, I'm just going to do mine again because I've fiddled around with that bottom E. Um, there it is. Uh, so that's GeForce again. Going to be hundreds of videos on that, I'm sure, around the place. If you want to go have a look, uh, right? So we've done <coughs> the nut. We've done GeForce. Again, There's a really cool thing I've got to show them. What's that then? Could you transform your guitar straight away? Transform it, Lee. Okay, so show me how to do it. All right. So this is awesome. The the debate that will never end is: Does a Les Paul look cooler with a scratch plate? Or does a Les Paul, we haven't got one here, look cooler without a scratch plate? And that's the sort of debate that will never end. And 
obviously, historically, Gibsons have been physically, the scratch plate, sorry, have been screwed into the guitar. So if you take it off, you're, you're left with a hole. No more, because what happens now on the 2015 models, I'll just leave my plectrum up here, is they just clip oh. into the uh, the pickups around. So I don't know if you can see on here, I've got some three small holes. Yeah. So if that's how you think a Gibson looks coolest, then that's great. However, if this is how you think a Gibson looks coolest, or you just like the um, <coughs> the, the, the feel of having a scratch bit on, this, this screw here is purely it's for... It's guile. Yeah, it's just because that's what it should look like, if you like, so... Um, I think it's much cooler cool. with that. And also, I find just my hand gets in the way of the pit guard, and I don't like that. I, I like my, my pull naked. That works on all the Les Pauls, except for the Deluxe, which is the one just behind uh, Rob's head, because obviously the pickup surrounds are a uh, different size. So, let's talk about the change in width of the neck. This is something that I really like. Yeah. And this also applies to all the guitars. Yeah. Now, I grew up playing kind of Ibanez, ESP, Jackson's, Charvel's, actually. It was sort of the first kind of super metal rock guitar. And they had wider necks. And, and I really liked that because the first couple of guitars I laid my hands on were kind of affordable Strat copies. And I found that when I started to play a bit of lead, well, you can almost barely not do it. The string would ping over the edge of the fret and you get a bleep, 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 kind of sound. And I, I, I don't know whether it was my technique was bad or whatever it was, but I would do runs and get to the end and go bleep, and it irritated me. Yeah. And even with my bar cording sometimes. Well, the width increase here is just enough that you yeah. can't bull up. It's it's um zero point zero five of an inch either side which is in, that what it is in metric it looks like about two millimeters either side so it does feel different um and i think this will be um you know the 2015 les paul will be something that uh, a hardcore les paul owner you know perhaps someone that owns four or five different les pauls will pick up and go ah you know what i'm not sure but of course what i'm excited about with this is all those guys who over the years have gone, ah, you know what, I, I, you know, I, I prefer the, the, the wide thin PRS <coughs> profile or um, Ivan is. This is ESP similar to that. Is a good There's just shout. more room in the playground, man. So I think it's it's one of those things, anybody that's perhaps uh, had a, you know, checked out a Gibson at some point over the last 10 or 20 years and just gone, mm, that's not, yeah, not really my bag. Go revisit because the 2015 range might be something that you want to have a look at. Um, from my perspective, my thought was you pick it up and the first thing you go is, oh yeah, that's wider than a Gibson uh, has been in the past. And then you kind of noodle around and like 10 minutes later, you've just forgotten that it's... Um, yeah, it just doesn't... It just, you just, you just play the guitar. Yeah. It's a bit like, I suppose Rob and I do tons of demos and one minute we're demonstrating an Ibanez and the next minute we're demonstrating an, a Les Paul and then a Telecaster or anything. And you just kind of go, it just takes you like two seconds just, well, you know, five minutes just to kind of yeah. go, oh yeah, I'm, I've got it. I mean, it certainly doesn't prevent sort of uh... it's it's uh, this one is a wizard yeah quick like it's a metal neck man yeah. I tell you it's a modern player neck it feels like the kind of neck i would want to rip on yeah which and i don't normally get that vibe from a les paul i normally want to play a bit of willy yeah. blues and but this this is a it's a player's neck so that's again that's a feature that uh, you know, you may or may not like on the new 2015 range. Chubber, isn't it? Well, that's where we're going to get into. We're, we'll revisit the specifics of each guitar. I think we'll just stay with the um, 
things that have changed and everything. Okay, so, another big thing for me then. Mm -hmm. I think this is great. And it is a very small thing, yeah. but these knobs, I first encountered this like a burp. kind of a knob on a PRS. Yeah. The, the way it grips. And previously, uh, I'd managed to accomplish it by getting a match and burning <laughs> into the end of uh, some of the knobs that I had. Because I, you probably will know I do a lot of adjustments with my yeah. little finger while I'm playing on stage. Yeah. Because I, I need to have, you know, half power, full yeah. power, slight adjustments, and sometimes tap it and bring it back down again. And you just can't do it if you haven't got enough clearance underneath the knob, yeah. which here you've got tons, and if you haven't got a little bit of grip. And I think this is, for playability point of view, brilliant change. Yeah. Um, whilst you're on the control knobs, and this is again, this is something for the real kind of They purists. all do things. It's very exciting. Yours do. Yeah. Um, but on all the guitars, Gibson have upgraded the thickness of the wire that they're using. Oh. I don't, again, hey, it's it's like uh, for all you guys out there that um, you know love to get into that kind of <coughs> yes, I can hear the difference between this thickness and this thickness. Eric Johnson, I'm thinking of. I'm sure he's probably going ah yes, I know exactly what that means. So yeah, thicker wire used. Led, you know so. Scientifically, well, as long as it's the right colour, less, obviously. less um, resistance. Yeah, obviously, uh, you know, I know in when they were testing, it was they had all the different colours of the rainbow wires, yeah. and orange was huh. the one. Well, there you go. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Orangey. So, well, should we start with my switching? Uh, there's uh, one more thing. Okay. The uh, you're going to love this. I think all Les Paul players will will appreciate this. The 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 bridge. Um, not only now, actually, are the saddles made of titanium. Yeah. Not, not titanium. So Iron Man <coughs> invented that. Um, uh, but the the saddles, which now I've got a 335. And if I want to sort of tinker with the height of the, the bridge, I have to basically slacken the strings off. Because once the strings are at tension, oh, you can't uh, do it. it's so difficult to, to use the thumb screws that are on here. So what they now have, in addition to the, the, the thumb wheels, uh, is a little Allen key uh, slot on the top. So if you want to, you can just put an Allen key in, raise or lower the, the bridge, and of course you can do that under full string That's tension, another no problem classic, at all. applicable yep. application of something that's really useful. Uh, that, that's one of those things that you think, they'll never go back from that, will yeah. they? You know, Because that's one of those things that there isn't really a downside argument And to. you know, Gibson invented lots of things that we take for granted as being everyday common occurrences. For example, adjustable truss rods. They did. They adjustable truss rods. Adjustable truss rods. Uh, allegedly, they, they invented the stop tail piece. They invented, uh, or you know, certainly the humbucker was first used on their guitars. Rock and roll. They invented everything. Yeah, they invented slash. Smarties. Even. He actually was a. He was a. He didn't exist before Gibson. You know, Les Paul made him. Nice change I think they've made to the front of this fretboard is that it is no longer uh, plastic inlaid. It is genuine pearl. It is. As if they've been playing a lot of Skyrim and uh, been pearl diving <laughs> and uh, got obsessed with it and then realised they could put it in their guitars. It is. It is. So it's so. made of real, real pearly, fishy pearl. Yeah. Now I don't ever really touch the fretboard, but I appreciate mm. the nice touch that it isn't plastic. And you know what they've done? They've obviously had to buy a lot of oysters. Yeah. Uh, so every single employee at uh, Gibson is giving his wife a pearl necklace for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, other little things again, uh, the jack socket uh, is a new design jack socket. Now I'm really pleased uh, with where this has gone because I think again, the old school, you know, <coughs> a socket that's been used on a Les Paul forever and a day does you know as it does have a tendency to sort of come a little bit loose and uh, and your you know your tech or yourself are periodically getting a pair of pliers to tighten it back up they did something in 2012 or 2013 on the standard which was to use a Neutrik jack socket which although it was very effective looked like a ugly wart yeah. on your Les Pauls behind so they've kind of done something now which looks like a normal jack socket but inside is much more robust um, it had more grip too yes I noticed that uh, and 
lastly, a couple of other things that are really just aesthetic. Um, the aesthetic. Aesthetic. The uh, logo is uh, every single guitar in the 2015 USA lineup, so even the SGs, have a tribute to Les Paul, who would have been 100 years old that's in 2015. His, that's Les Paul's signature, man. It's the last known before, you yeah. know, the, kind of like the last known. So it kind of, I suppose, it's, you know, that some people uh, w may not like it, but I think as a mark of respect to Les Paul, and it, it, it genuinely is his signature. Yeah, um, respect the dude. You may or may not know this, but counterfeit Gibsons are a huge problem. Chipson. Um, yeah, now I, you know, obviously counterfeit guitars are illegal. So let's put the legality side to it. But sort of morally speaking, I kind of think to yourself, do you know what? We've all had a fake Rolex that someone's bought from Abu Dhabi for us and things like that. And to be honest with you, if you buy something and you know it's fake and it's really cheap, there's a kind of a thing that says, you know, so what? I think the problem here, though, is where you get guitars that, that are sold as the genuine article and are fake. And then, of course, you realise some hard. years down the line that you've been done. And that's bad. And I think every uh, guitar manufacturer should try to um, do as much as they can to prevent that from happening. So one of the steps that Gibson have taken uh, for 2015 is there is a hologram uh, underneath the lacquer on the back of the headstock of all these guitars, um, which is, as I said, it's not designed, it's not there to try and say, oh, look at me, I'm really pretty. It's, it's just there to try and prevent, make it that bit harder for the counterfeiters to um, copy the guitar. So if you're looking at a 2015 uh, Gibson guitar uh, from the USA range, double check the back of the headstock, make sure you've got the correct Les Paul hologram on there. Because if you haven't, it could be a Chibson. We have now kind of finished all of the, the, the sort of the, the stuff, if you like, on a 2015 guitar that is uh, different on every model. So now we're just going to go into the specifics uh, and kind of every video that you see of us doing of the 2015 range. Again, we're not going to repeat that whole big long diatribe. We're just going to bullet point it on the on the video. And um, yeah, you can always refer back to refer this. Refer back to this one. So, so well, I got some really cool switching. So you've got the Les Paul Standard, yes, which is available in uh, two models, essentially the uh, and they're identical models, except that there is a, a, a triple A top, which is what's on this one, or a quadruple A top, quilted kind of top, if you want to pay a little bit extra and have something a um, little bit more swirly and exotic. Um, so let's start with the switching, which I think, to all intents and purposes, is. Uh, pretty much the same as what was on the 2014 model. Mm. But talk us through. I'll start with the volume knobs. Now I've just backed off the gain on this beautiful Marshall JCM 800 so that you can hear it a bit clearer. The volume knobs tap, but they don't just tap normally. They tap to give you the tonality of a kind of a P90 vibe. So here is Bridgie Bridge. If I tap it, I really like the, the, the fact that they've done something. I think there's an extra component in there to give it that sort of P90 sort of tone. Because I've always thought, you know, coil splitting a humbucker on a Les Paul never ever sounds like a strap because fundamentally nah. it's a completely different guitar. You don't really want it to. You just no, buy so, a strap. So I actually like the fact that what you can do now is essentially have one guitar with a, with a full humbucker and a P90. So it's kind of like it'll give you... <laughs> Um, you know, old-fashioned P90 loaded Les Paul as well as your sort of, you know, full bore humbuckery sound. Um, oh, look at that. Beautiful. Let's do the other one then. So, neck position. Sometimes yeah. you just want to have everything. You do want everything. Everything. Every last sort of, you know, bit of thing. Tendril of. Mm. And sometimes you get a signal from a guitar that goes up here, around here, through a bit, a bit of thing, and then out. Yeah. And you get a great sound from a Les Paul through a Marshall. But sometimes you just want to go. <laughs> and it's. <laughs> 
And with that, you can't do that. Yes. So, what I'm hearing immediately, so this is without it, is it's darker with, a, with that off and bright. And you can still do the old P90 trick with it in its amazing new, um, what do they call it? Pure? Pure tone Pure bypass. The bypass. Blow, blow switch thing was something I think John Sur invented way back when. He may have even been working for Fender when <coughs> he invented it, but I can't remember, or maybe it's a Sur thing. But And so uh, it's a bit like when we call vacuum cleaners Hoovers. It's a sort of, it's you know, a it's Gibson's name. version of a blow switch. So here's the way. same thing. I'll, 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 do the, I'll do the pure straight out yeah. sound, and then I'll P90 it for you. Yeah. That's really pleasing to the ears, isn't it? Yeah, sounds awesome. So we've got one switch do... left. Oh, I see. Um, one switch left. This one. It's my favourite switch of all of them. Yes, it's the green switch. It reverses the polarity of the midshift foot Dolerian crystals to inverse the flux capacitors and give you I, Peter Green tone. I, I like what it's basically doing. I like, Rob's explanation of that is like when you see all pro guitar players and they're being interviewed and they say, yeah, you, um, <coughs> you've got this fantastic new uh, switching thing that does it. And the pro guitar player goes, yeah, I don't really know anything about what it does, but it, I just pull this out and it makes a sound that I like. So I will explain what it's actually doing. <coughs> it's reversing the polarity of the neck pickup on uh, Rob's Les Paul, which yeah. is an old Peter Green urban myth that he had his he had some work done to his Les Paul. The tech gave it back to him, having uh, wired the uh, neck pickup in mistakenly uh, uh, the, the other way around, or the alternative way around, the opposite way around, so that. When both pickups are used together, you get a different kind of um, relationship you know what, between the two pickups. I'm a massive Peter Green fan, but mm. although I think Peter Green is famous for doing it, I'm pretty sure yeah. Les Paul had switching that allowed uh, that anyway. It's certainly on... I wonder if Peter Green did it first and Les Paul went, that's a cool idea, I'll put a switch on it. Because I certainly... I think the, the guitar that... Les Paul had with all the switches on it was called something like the recording artist uh -huh. and that was a 70s thing and I'm fairly sure that Peter Green had kind of done this before that but well, what I've hey, done here you'll is know. I've set them both up as P90s yes. and I've reversed it so you get so we can hear the difference. Oh, it's just... In, in layman's terms, wired how it should be, you can hear two humbuckers kind of working together and adding flavour, and uh, where you've got one wired the opposite way around to the other, you know, the, the switch that Rob just pulled in, you can kind of almost hear the pickups are fighting for, fighting for supremacy. I you really get that like sort it. of something <clears throat> removed kind of sound yeah. rather than something added. You can get a bit Brian May if you had a bit more gain, yeah. a bit more treble boost. I think it's a fantastic tonal variant. It makes this such a machine yeah. of desirability. Yeah. A couple of other things on Rob's guitar just to do again with, with the um, carving on the guitar. The neck uh, has what's called an asymmetrical profile to it. So um, most uh, guitars are cut symmetrically. So if you like the the, the <coughs> if you were to look down the, the the neck like that, the curve underneath would be uh, the same either side. Asymmetrically means that it's kind of like your hand. hand. So it's a little bit more curved on the thumb side and a little softer on the um, on the finger <coughs> side of things. Uh, the other thing we should say about the standard as well is it has um, 
uh, some body routing. The reason Gibson started routing uh, the bodies was that sometime during the 80s or the 90s, when uh, laws started coming in about um, where you were allowed to source your timber from. Yeah. So, you know, early Gibson Les Pauls, people would just go into like, you know, thousand year old forests and they cut trees down and that's where timber was sourced from. And then obviously people started going, hang on a second, if we keep doing this, there'd be no trees left. So they said, you know, let, let's, let's replant and let's say you can only use those timbers. So those timbers um, were fed and watered specifically to make the trees go fast, uh, grow faster than they would do perhaps during natural sort of life cycle. Uh -huh. So the wood came out denser and people uh, from Gibson were kind of going, you know what, a lot of this new wood that we're sourcing is quite a bit heavier than the old wood that we were sourcing. So they started to route the guitars. Now in, in the early days, they never even told people they were doing this. So you just basically, you just didn't, you know, essentially your, your guitar would have some holes in it. A little later on, Gibson started experimenting uh, <coughs> with that weight relieving and they did some guitars that were what they call fully chambered. So this is almost like having uh, like an, an acoustic kind yeah. of guitar. So where, where the bulk of the wood is kind of taken out. And Gibson noticed that acoustically, uh, uh, you know, tonally, the guitar began to sound quite different to a guitar that was um, traditionally weight relieved. So what Rob has now on the standard, and it, this is what's called the modern routing and this is kind of where it's a, sort of an in-between so it's it's there's more wood taken out than a traditional body route but less wood taken out than a than a full chamber and again it's become something that it, it keeps the weight of the les paul at a sort of a sensible you know eight nine pounds kind of mark um, oh, it's not heavy at all no. this is light if you read a little bit about what Jim DeCola says, he's the head of kind of, you know, the, the product development at Gibson USA. You know, he will tell you that, you know, again, it's, it's you know, acoustically, it does change the way a guitar sustains. And he, he actually believes that, you know, that the myth that the real heavy solid guitars resonate more than the, the lighter chambered ones is in his experience, not true. The opposite is actually true. Is that, is that the, the uh, weight relieved and chambered ones actually resonate uh -huh. a bit more than the the solid ones. You tell them about the little bits of metallic. No, go on. You tell, tell them that. Well, there's little bits of metallic flake in the uh, in the paint underneath the lacquer. Yeah, and it just makes it pop beautifully like this. Yeah, I mean, from where you're looking, and from where any kind of audience would stand whilst <clears> you're playing guitar, all they're going to see is a kick-ass, super kind of popping, kind of coloured burst. Yeah. Actually, if you get up real close, and you probably have to be about a foot away or two feet away to see it, you'll actually see um, there's just a real kind of little metallic kind of fleck in the It's guitar. barely noticeable, to be fair, but it's enough to make yeah. a slight difference. And it's, pre it's predominantly sort of just round the actual edge. Lee, which colours are available? They're available in these colours. So pretty much everything about this guitar is modern. It feels great to play if you're a metal, rock, fusion-y guy, if you like a bit of technique, if you want a really easy to play guitar with lots of tonal variants, lots of things you can alter to make it feel great and a quick tuning system. This is a great, great guitar. What have you got? Now, I have uh, the Gibson Les Paul Traditional. It's been a real popular kind of model uh, in, in the USA range for a while now and uh, historically what it's kind of been is it's been a version of the the standard but with um a chubbier neck and none of the um whistles and bells with wiring so so these are those are burst bucker pros in there these are 59 reissue humbuckers so i don't have any funny you know i don't have any coil taps or phase reverses or anything like that it's just straightforward and my my neck is um a deep, you know, much deeper than uh, Rob's. Rob's is quite a slimline kind of feel. However, that's kind of where the traditionalness ends because of course I still have um, all of the features that we talked about right at the beginning of this video. So the uh, G-Force auto tuning, the zero fret, the wider um, neck, um, the beefed up jack socket, stuff like that. So this guitar is heavier because this has what's called modern weight relief, which is just, you know, modern weight relief looks like this. <laughs> um, I don't have the um, I don't have the metallic paint finish. I just have a traditional burst. 
Here's a little um, tip bit of trivia for you. In 1958, when Gibson first introduced the burst finishes to the to the Les Paul, uh, every single one made that year was Heritage Cherry Sunburst, and most of the sort of the bursts that you see nowadays, not all, but a lot of the bursts that you see nowadays, are actually reproductions of how all those original um, Heritage Cherry burst guitars faded differently. Oh, I didn't so know that. Some people would keep them in windows, and some people would keep them under their beds, and so they all kind oh. of faded differently. And so a lot of things. Uh, but anyway. So the, the traditional is also available in uh, a number of different colours, uh, and here they are now. So, uh, let's take you through tonally. This, this will take me a lot less long to, to demonstrate because it just basically has your, your three well, Which amp are you going through, bro? I'm going through a Fender Hot Rod Deluxe with some pedals on the floor, um, and we'll swap guitars in a minute to have a little bit of a jam. Uh, so here's my rhythm pickup, 59 humbuckers. Softer, lovely soft kind of sound. Uh, treble pickup. There's a super video, by the way, online by Joe Bonamassa, who really kind of explores all the tonal Spits. variants of a Les Paul just using the, the knobs. And it's kind of, I think, way too many of us just leave everything on 10 all the time and we don't get to explore, you know, like 75% of all the tones in your Les Paul. Um, so this is the two pickups together. <laughs> Sounds really sweet. It's it's nice. I've always been a fan of the lower output humbucker. Um, certainly for clean sounds, it gives you that really really bell like kind of clean tone. And for distortion, it just tends to just loses that aggressive kind of nature to distortion. So if I put, um, I'm using my Stax Master here. So I'm I'm just going to use the, the the the. Well, I've got a blue mode and a red mode. So here's here's the blue modes. <laughs> And the red mode is a little bit fiercer. Even with a lot of gain, it's vintagey sort of sounding, isn't it? That's yeah. A stupid word, really, isn't it? But it's, not really. It's not. It's not aggressive sounding. Um, now, the traditional. This is the one in the whole range. If you pick this up and you're not a fan of a chubber, uh, <laughs> you are not going to get on with this. Uh, this is a. Um, this is a. This is a lot of mahogany sitting behind a lump of rosewood here. Uh, so you got to like that kind of thing. I'm, as you probably know from other videos we've done, I do like, I do like that. Uh, but I'm probably, I think if I was to take all my sort of discussions and stuff with customers, and I meet a lot of guys who, who buy a lot of guitars, um, I think the majority will prefer the slimmer line feel. Um, but if you, you know, if you love a chubber, then... Then you're uh, off. You, then, you know, do check the traditional out. Uh, so... Yeah, that's pretty much all there is to really tell you about the, the traditional because it is a straight up sort well, of straightforward. I'd guitar. like to hear that through the JCM. And I'd like to hear that through the Fender. Let's swap over Let's guitar. Swap.
feels like someone has made a neck out of a sheet of cigarette paper after playing that. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually is, <coughs> this is, this is actually just normal. Actually, you know what? It's so weird as well. You can really wow. feel the asymmetrical profile on this, especially when I've, you know, when you've, I've just spent half an hour playing that guitar. Um, but uh, yeah, this, this. Let uh, me just, let me just see what. <laughs> Completely different feeling. Yeah, absolutely different. Very, very different. Definitely yeah. going to appeal. I think that will appeal to the guy that probably um, plays slower and with more. Oh, I don't know about that, man. Oh, I mean, you really? can. Uh, you can. <laughs> you can still shred on it. It's just that it's 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 a big neck. This is for the guy that wants a Les Paul that they're used to. Yeah. And this is for the guy that wants what Gibson do best, which is yeah. innovation. I mean, that, that neck there, if you've tried a, a 58 Les Paul, um, you know, like a reissue 58, that's kind of where this neck's coming from. By the time they got to sort of, you know, 59, 60, <coughs> uh, it was more the slimmer profile like this. Although, although again, the asymmetrical thing, um, that's only been in the range for a relatively short period of time. Yeah, so. but just, I mean, for example... <laughs> It's still you can't see Ingwin Malmsteen playing that. But what I'm just saying there. is that the, the the thickness of the neck doesn't stop you from playing fast. No. It doesn't feel like a slow guitar. It just has that. If you want that blues grip over the top, yes. you've got it's that the, blues grip it's the blues over the top, grip, isn't it? Yeah, the blues grip. I think yeah. Rather than go through all the tones again, Rob and I'll just have a sort of a jam out. Um, might even fade out on this jam. That's probably it's been very nice idea. to speak to you all. I'm really looking forward to these comments. I know it's been a long video. Uh, there was one other thing I wanted to say because um, there's been a ton of the pretty much the whole 2015 range has uh, gone up in price versus the 2014 range. Um, personally, I think most of that price rise is probably just because of improvements to quality that they've made on the range. Um, however, there does appear to be a, a forum sort of post going round and round and round about how the prices have gone up by 30 something percent, uh, which I have to say. Not in the UK, they haven't. I don't know where that's come from. Uh, pretty much all these guitars are within about 10% of what they were in 2014. Uh -huh. So uh, if you're reading that um, and you're in England or the United Kingdom, uh, it doesn't apply over here. I don't know where that, maybe it applies in America. Maybe an American person wants to comment on that. I don't know. But yeah, over here, not the case. Rule um, Britannia, Britannia, blah, blah, blah. <laughs>